name's Laura and I live in Duckingfield, in which is in Manchester. I'd say I got into it back when I was about 10 um, because uh, my mum used to have to do a lot of travelling and would come home late. So there was three of us, I was the middle child and had to look after everyone. So I would have to come home and make everyone's tea, so it pretty much started there. I suppose with my nan, she was she sort of dedicated her life to food and um, then the importance of ingredients and stuff. I suppose when I was younger I didn't appreciate it as much as I do now, but I suppose Especially with the food side, it's it is important because you know food, you know eating the right things, you know you're healthier and you're happier. And I suppose that was the, the main influence with my nan. It's the importance of wholesome food instead of eating junk food. I suppose the primary one is a roast dinner because that is like our family tradition, and there's obviously everyone makes it slightly differently, but it just it, that's the main one. But Things like pasties and stews and uh, potato ash and stuff, but when I got older I sort of started to dabble with like more foreign dishes like Chinese and uh, Italian and stuff. So it was nice to sort of branch off from the traditional line that my mum had. I like to sort of potter around in the northern quarter really because you've got all these independent cafes and um, you know instead of going to sort of your, your bigger brands like Frankie and Benny's and stuff it's because obviously it feels mass produced anyway whereas if you go into um, the ones in the northern quarter there's one place in particular like called Teacup and you know they do nice like dishes and cakes and things like that so I'd say that was probably my favourite. Yeah it sounds daft but I well I would call them nana pasties because my nan used to make two types of pasties and she she always said to me never tell anyone the secret to my first one which I won't do so <laughs> I won't do that but like with the second one she used to she'd make like a great big pan of like potato ash and she'd say oh you can make many dishes out of one pan of ash she used to always say that but one thing that she used to do was her like nana pasty well one of her nana pasties so she'd make a big pan let it cool make her pasties and you know I like making them because growing up that's the association we have with my nan so I suppose like making that it's nice because you sort of you know carrying it on I suppose what, how it started off was because on my normal Instagram when my nan used to cook something for me like because I used to go and see her every day and I'd come in and she was like oh I've, I've made some potato rash or I've made some bubble and squeak or I've made a stew and because it always looked delicious I was always constantly taking pictures of it and putting it on my Instagram and I think it just it kind of like there was a moment where it clicked and I thought why not make one that's sort of the influence on my nan and when I did make it my nan um, my nan really liked it because she, she'd be constantly asking me going oh how many likes have I got and it's like she's old people and social media it's just like they're like what so it's like I'd explain to her what a like meant and what a comment meant and like every day she'd come in and she'd be like oh how many likes did I get on my nana pasties how many likes did I get on this so I ended up like making like a little hashtag you know especially for her cooking and it was, it was just unbelievable for like a woman who couldn't work a TV remote to suddenly knowing like the language of social media like how many likes have I got I never thought I'd see that so it, that was nice because I could sort of you know involve her in that even though she didn't quite understand what any of it meant. I think it is important because especially with sort of today like people don't cook as much as they used to because everyone's so used to going for you know the quicker option and you know ready meals and takeaways and all these different things and they're so unhealthy and I think keeping to old dishes like that you, you just can't go wrong with them and I'm a traditionalist for stuff like that and I like the fact that I'm sort of passing recipes that you know that I've learned from past generations of my family, it'd be nice to be able to see the future.
future generations to be able to sort of replicate and sort of put a spin on the recipes that were passed down to me. So yeah, I really think it's important keeping those traditions alive.